You brought your price target down. You had that 1400 for a while. Now it's at 1000 You still love it. I mean, how much do you love it? Look, it's one of our favorite long-term names along with Apple, Microsoft. But we had a call like it is. I mean, they're going to miss deliveries. Numbers are going to come down. It's going to be a, a slower trajectory for the second half. And that's why we had to lower the price target. But this storm will pass. In other words, the long-term story for Tesla doesn't change. In this video, Dan the Man Ives warns Tesla stock investors of a brutal Q2 miss, which could be a great buying opportunity depending on how the stock market reacts, while still remaining very bullish on Tesla over the long term. And Ives also shares some thoughts on the Twitter Tesla stock tie up. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over one 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. Dan, you saved the best for last. This is where you're gonna tell us the real deal. I know it, because all week long you've been uh, talking about this. I, I wanna start with the Twitter Elon Musk story. What do you think is really happening? Where are we at this point? Look, I mean, I think this continues to be a 50-50 situation, 50% chance that he walks, 50% chance he drives a lower price. I beg to differ. In my opinion, about a 95% chance this deal completes. Elon does not want to have to start his own competing social network. It would be economically cheaper, much more affordable, a couple of billion dollars, probably done and dusted, but far too much mental energy required to build an entire social media platform competing with Titter competing with Titter, <laughs> competing with Twitter from scratch. That being said, it's possible Elon walks temporarily as a negotiating tactic, especially given the fact that he's still waiting for Twitter to prove, to verify, to validate their claims, to substantiate their claims that less than 5% of active users on the platform are bots. It is definitely possible that Elon says, listen, until your motherfuckers can prove these claims, deal's off. Then Twitter stock crashes, in my opinion, what, 20, 30 plus percent gets absolutely f***ing creamed. Next minute, they come crawling back, oh, Elon, ha, ha, oops, we accidentally realized that our bots are actually more than we thought. Uh, silly us. Please don't sue us, SEC. So it's definitely possible that he walks, but I think long term, this deal is almost certain to complete. Lower price, almost certain as well. But Elon is very serious about this. And this is the most logical path for him to take. As I said, too much energy. It's not the money. It's the mental energy and the time if Elon has to build his own competing platform. I think the refinancing change, that's bullish for Tesla stock because that was a big overhang. And I think you're starting to see that reflected. But look, I think at this point, it comes down to renegotiation. 42 to $45, I think is mostly where the street thinks the deal ultimately ends up of falling out. And again, if he walks, they will get ultimately caught up in the courts, but Twitter as a standalone would be in the 20s. So this was a 54-20 deal originally. And so some of the questions and things that I've heard so much is that he he really cannot lower the price because of the legal, you know, the way it's written. You can tell me if you think otherwise. Um, he's using more of his own money rather than um, financing uh, and what he's and his actions and what he's been doing has helped Tesla. Look, I think this is, I wouldn't call it necessarily a scapegoat issue, but 400 billion came off Twitter's market, I mean, Tesla's market because of Twitter. So it clearly changed the situation for Musk. The bot issue, you know, they're going to ultimately have to, you know, settle this out in terms of the renegotiation. Is it 5%? Is it 20%? That something that has to be behind the scenes. But let's just be clear like, right. stock at $40, there's a better chance for me playing Golden State Warriors and 5420 happen. Hard to argue with that point from Ives. It, it's just ultimately a matter of what the price is lower or does he walk? Anyone, I understand the legal issues, but he'll ultimately fight that in court and use the bot issue. Also agree on this point. There's a clause in this deal here suggesting that Twitter can enforce the deal, make Elon buy the company. But of course, Elon will win the absolute flying f out of this in courts because you're like, listen, motherfuckers, your publicly stated claims about less than 5% bots. Our own investigations have suggested this is an absolute load of horse shit. It's way higher than this. And until you can prove otherwise, we walk with no penalty. Go f yourself. I understand. 
I won't say the Golden State Warriors are on the phone for you. I mean, honestly, I agree. I see what you're saying. I mean, and also, I, I really am curious if there's going to be any repercussions from the SEC to Twitter because Twitter, you know, really filed that the bot issue was, you know, 5% or less, and it's it's turning out to be a, a completely different picture. Now, this is actually a very important point, as I said earlier in this video. It's probably not going to end well for Twitter here. It appears that Twitter, and of course, I don't know for sure, I'm just talking about my anecdotal experience and a number of companies that have done their own research and published online into percentage of bots on Twitter versus real humans. It seems, from where I'm standing, actually sitting, that Twitter has intentionally misled, deceived, and in fact, lied in their quarterly filings to the SEC regarding their own <laughs> estimates of how many users are bots versus human. If this turns out to be correct, Twitter are gonna get absolutely fucked, assuming that the SEC are actually trying to do their job rather than just be Think about all the investors out there who thought, oh geez, that's a lot of users, that's a lot of user growth, that's a lot of engagement, who realized, oh wait, they were all bots. Twitter is in a really tough situation here. So we'll leave it alone. So you think it's a 50-50 deal, but if it does not go through, Forget about the one billion breakup fee. I mean, he's gonna be sued for billions, right? I mean, this could really hit him hard. Look, I mean, I think ultimately you, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, from the beginning, this has been a head scratcher deal. You know, freedom of speech is one thing, spending 25% of his net worth on it is another. And I think it's ultimately one, he woke up one day and just realized that whether it's cold feet or the markets change, this was not the deal at that price. Again, he could bring in other partners to lessen the, and he's already has at least on the debt side, but I think that's where this ultimately plays out. And Twitter's board, you know, their back's ultimately against the wall because they know there's no other bidder. And if Musk walks, it's a stock that likely has a two in front of it. Oh, uh, you know what? You're right. I mean, he so certainly inflated this stock and, you know, you know, even had, uh, you know, them saying that Elon Musk was probably the best one to take this and move this in, in the direction that it's supposed to really go in and that their hands are tied. I mean, they've really acknowledged that they needed a change. And you're right, he boosted this stock and, I mean, I don't know, you said a two-handle. I mean, whether it's $20, $30 or what it should be worth, but I do think it's been beaten down. And I, his whole mantra is that he wants free speech. And, and, you know, those kinds of things don't necessarily always come with a price tag. They come with a heart, right? And um, so I, I'm really, I can't wait to see. But what's the timing on this one? Before I get to Tesla, what's the timing? I mean, when will we know something and really be able to say, okay, the deal is done, the deal's not done? I think in the next week or two, he's going to ultimately have to either come out, either talk about it or in, in some filing in terms of, you know, if the deal ultimately is still on hold, does he ultimately try to contend it, at least from the bot issue and try to walk away, you know, or goes forward with some sort of renegotiation. I think that's, I think over the next week, we, you know, we'll ultimately probably get a better sense there. And I think what you're seeing with the stock, especially since the refinancing change that we saw this week, you know, that increases the chance that a deal in some form is going to get done right would you buy this stock here at 40 20 sell it what would you do no, I, I wouldn't buy it because i mean you know it's funny so many people are like oh the deals definitely happen at 54 20. Like, are you buying the stock they're like no okay so so the point is i this is not a stock that i would touch just because there's the risk that he walks away and if he walks away that's what the arbs are playing here you know, despite the legal ramifications, I mean, this is a stock that could go much lower. And that's, and look, and that's been the problem for Tesla stock. You're starting to say overhang less than a bit, but as a Tesla investor, you never in a twilight zone moment wanted Witter deal risk to be impacting Tesla stock. And that's essentially what happened with the circus show. Yeah, understood. Okay, so let's get to Tesla, which still is not just a car company, it is everything. I mean, it can charge your home, batteries, it, you you know, manufacturing all over the world. Credit where it's due here, Nicole, the anchor, acknowledging that Tesla's not just a car company, also pointing out the solar, the home batteries, the whole ecosystem, and their manufacturing expertise. This is rare to find in the mainstream finance media, so credit where it's due. Somehow made it through supply chain issues and chip shortages and COVID. Um, you brought your price target down. You had that 1400 for a while. Now it's at 1000 You still love it? I mean, how much do you love it? Look, it's one of our favorite long-term names along with Apple, Microsoft, and cybersecurity. 
But but we had a call like it is. I mean, they're going to miss deliveries based on zero COVID issues in China. This is a very important point from Dan Ives. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen, but it seems very likely given the Wall Street estimates are here. And then there was the fascist futile shutdowns in Shanghai and estimates haven't been adjusted down to compensate, that Tesla's gonna massively miss on deliveries, on revenue, on earnings, you name it. Of course, this temporary irrelevant blip in Tesla's long-term growth trajectory doesn't mean sh for long-term stock investors, but there's definitely a possibility that the stock market, with its extremely short time horizon, overreacts, freaks out, dumps Tesla stock, or maybe I'll be surprised and Tesla stock heads to the moon because usually when Tesla blows away expectations, the stock gets crushed, so you never know. But the point is, we really may have the absolute perfect storm for Tesla stock in the next few weeks and months. First, Elon sells, literally causes the stock to crash just the act of selling. Then there's the idea that Elon's selling, which causes many others to dump the stock. Then we have a war in Ukraine. Then we have the fascist shutdowns in Shanghai. Then we have the Twitter deal with Elon, also investors freaking the f out. It's almost as if the universe is conspiring to present the buying opportunity of the century. A massive miss for Q2, depending on how the market reacts, could be the icing on the cake. I wouldn't be counting on it, but if this reaction happens, I'm definitely gonna be pumping the f out of my OnlyFans to raise a little bit more capital to buy more Tesla stock while it's on a massive discount. Numbers are gonna come down. It's gonna be a, a slow trajectory for second half and that's why we had to lower the price target but this you know this storm will pass in other words the long-term story for tesla doesn't change now the multiple in terms of this market clearly changes and that's what you're seeing across all of tech all of disruptive tech but it comes down to if musk is able to navigate the circus show situation i think you're starting to see him quiet down a bit tesla ultimately will get through 2q and then the street focuses on second half numbers in 2023 but the biggest risk to, to tech names is the zero COVID situation in China, you know, because that continues to really be that black cloud over the sector. Elon Musk, I don't know if you know him personally or if he's a good friend of yours, but he's the visionary. He's the guy who comes out with everything. And that's one reason why people buy into companies. It's because of management or a CEO's vision. At the same time, the test, the Twitter risk that you said you never would have thought would have been a risk in, in Tesla, it almost, you almost, remember he used to tweet all the time, he used to get in trouble for that. You almost start to wonder, like, will he do something else to put shareholders at risk? Spoiler alert, one, people are packages. You get everything that comes in the package. If you don't like what's inside, well, don't buy it, don't own it, stay the f away. Second, Elon is gonna to continue to Elon, and by that I mean he's gonna to continue to do things that he believes will increase the probability that the future will be good and or better. This includes standing up for things that are important, even if it might ruffle a few feathers. This includes calling out piles of human excrement who are doing more harm than good. This includes sharing ideas and supporting causes that might cause some people to get butthurt or triggered. As I've said, Elon's gonna Elon. If you don't like it, don't own any of his companies. Pretty simple. If something matters enough to Elon, irrespective of the potential consequences for Tesla shareholders or anyone else, he's gonna do what he believes to be right. If you don't like it, don't invest. Easy. Well, look, I mean, Musk, again, right now, he's obviously gone through the spotlight in terms of this Pandora's box situation with Twitter, but he's the genius behind Tesla, genius behind SpaceX, and, and ultimately, that's not gonna change, right? I mean, he's, you know, when you look at the EV market and so many competitors, I mean, Tesla continues to really own the market. And I think that's what you're ultimately seeing play out. But he has to have situational awareness to navigate this current storm. I think you're starting to see it dissipate, especially just in a general risk on across tech and disruptive tech. But no doubt, I mean, this is something the zero COVID issues is something he has to navigate along with the Twitter situation because it's it's almost become a Siamese twin situation, you know, at least up till we'll call it the last 24 hours between Tesla and Twitter till he changed that finance. So in short, Dan Ives remains super bullish on Tesla over the long term, despite cutting his Tesla stock price target recently from $1,400 per share down to $1,000 per share. Keeping in mind, a lot of this has to do with multiples, plus some very strange rationale about the shutdowns in China, which have absolutely nothing the f to do with Tesla's long-term trajectory. But hey, who am I to judge? At least he's not this idiot, and I do mean idiot, and by the way, I just wanna make sure that everybody got that idiot. See, the thing is, the internet never forgets, and I'm here to make sure of that. Let's listen to these embarrassingly idiotic comments from one of the Wall Street Journal's finest contributors, Charlie Grant. This is back in mid-2019, among peak Tesla FUD, by the way. 
Let's check what Tesla stock was worth back then. Alrighty, so this went to air in late July 2019. Let's find exactly where that was on this price chart. 2019, July, let's call it 2nd of August. Let's be generous here. Tesla stock since this incredible genius shared his thoughts up a mere 1500%. The reason I mention this and bring this up now is because these comments followed Tesla's Q2 in 2019. We may see a repeat of the same kind of comments from people who don't know what the f they're talking about. This could cause fear, uncertainty, doubt, and a major sell-off on Tesla stock. So again, I don't know for sure, but if this plays out again, I won't be surprised. Tesla trades at a huge premium to the rest of the automotive industry. And now its growth rate, when you look at third quarter analyst estimates, uh, revenue is actually expected to fall year over year. We have a declining set top line in a tough business, and the story is getting worse and worse, and the balance sheet continues to be very rickety. I see big trouble ahead. Hi, Charlie. It's me from the future, because you were talking about trouble ahead. Well, I'm ahead, and I can tell you that the only trouble was the fact that this idiotic comment still exists on the internet, you f***ing moron. Tesla stock was about $45 per share when this clown said that he saw more trouble ahead for the company. Why? Mr. Dingbat over here was focused on the ultra short term, he had also disengaged his brain and wasn't able to see what was happening in terms of operating leverage, scale, driving cost down, innovation, technological advantage, and so on. Once again, I remind you guys, Tesla stock up about 1,500%. That's 1,500 since these comments aired just a couple of years ago. Again, I want to emphasize, we may see the same kind of discussion happening after Tesla's Q2 miss. Don't be surprised if this plays out. What do you think is the main reason why the stock is down so much today? I think that record deliveries did not produce profit. It's really that simple. Tesla reported 95,000 cars delivered in the second quarter. Take that, Tesla bears. Well, guess what? Revenue was 10% below the record set in the third quarter last year where they delivered way fewer cars. That is a textbook sign of a demand problem. That is a textbook example of somebody who thinks their brain is much larger than it actually is. A demand problem, really. By the way, when this was recorded, mid-2019, Tesla had just delivered in a single quarter a whopping 95,000 vehicles. And the most recent quarterly deliveries from Tesla, anyone remember? Over 300,000. A 3x in quarterly deliveries in about the last three years. Some demand problem, Charlie. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention the 6 to 12 month plus wait times for Tesla vehicles ordered just about anywhere on planet Earth today. That too is obviously a textbook sign of a demand problem. Way too fucking much of it. Why? Tesla is cutting prices to move metal. And that's great. That can, you can do that for a little while. Not a sustainable business tactic. Not a reason for a premium equity value. You know, Charlie, we talked to Tim Higgins, your colleague, yesterday about his reporting on some of the substitution that's been happening where the Model 3 pricing, you know, it's the newer car. In a way, it was about the same price as the Model S, and maybe there was some cannibalization there. Is that reflected in these results, or do you think that... The, some of those margin pressures are coming from the fact that Tesla's trying to differentiate that product, say it is the lower end product, you know, from the Model S and, and X. Uh, fewer S and X sales are absolutely a huge problem. Uh, Elon Musk said on the conference call last night that it's insignificant in terms of total delivery volume. And yeah, I guess that's true, but it's that's completely irrelevant. That's how Tesla has made what little money they have over their uh, now long history. It's really not a startup. It's been 15 years. They've made money in four discrete quarters and, you you know, it's been here and there and it's been on the back of the S and the X. So you can dismiss that going away all you want. The margin pressure and mix issues that hamper Tesla are only going to get worse. These comments have also aged stunningly well. Not. Model S and X making up less than 5% of Tesla's deliveries in the most recent quarter. Yet Tesla's margins significantly higher than they were when this clown said that they had issues with margin and it'd be a big problem when Tesla's mix of sales was comprised more of Model 3 and so on versus Model X and S. Again, these comments did not age well. Why? Because Charlie wasn't thinking. Either he didn't have the capacity or just the desire. I just don't understand how people don't get this. Sell more vehicles, economies of scale. Lower cost to produce the vehicles means your margins creep higher and or you can sell products for a lower price, meaning more consumers will buy them, meaning more demand. Never ending loop. Produce more vehicles, innovate, drive costs down, increase margins and or drive prices lower, more demand, rinse, recycle, repeat. And again, I want to bring this back to Tesla's Q2 2022. It's very likely we're going to hear these same kind of comments. It's pretty likely that margins are going to be down over the quarter. One, the fascist shutdowns in Shanghai. Two, Austin and Berlin starting a rant will have a negative drag on margins over the next couple of quarters. So don't expect if we see Tesla's automotive margin decline for the first time in ages and people start freaking out, grow stories over, margins are collapsing, it's the end of the world, blah, f 
blah blah blah. These same comments will age about as well as Charlie's have just saying. So in summary, it seems likely that Tesla is going to have a terrible Q2, collapsing margins, collapsing revenue, busted growth story and so on. And of course, Wall Street with their micro penis length time perspective at best will probably lose their f***ing minds, massively revise down earnings estimates, margin estimates, delivery estimates and so on. I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but given their track record in general, and of course there are exceptions, but the consensus on Wall Street still today, they just don't get it. And if that's true, the universe may once again be conspiring to provide long-term Tesla stock investors whose brains work an incredible buying opportunity. Like I said though, usually when Tesla beats earnings, the stock collapses, so maybe if they have a really bad quarter, the stock moons, who knows? But just wanna put this out there, definitely a high probability that Tesla's quarter looks bad on paper, Wall Street freaks out and the stock gets smashed. I'm still buying with every spare cent, so I really I really hope this happens, but as I've said in the past, hope is not strategy. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video, and finally, don't forget to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. You'll gain access to well over 100 exclusive videos, loads of perks, heaps of exclusive content, including up to date access to my Tesla price targets and my Tesla valuation model at the investor supporter level and above. So, see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content, and perks and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.